Thank you for that uh, very warm welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone. It's time to, uh, to settle in. Time to settle in for another episode of The Buzz. Um, today we're going to be talking... Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, today we're going to be discussing a really cool picking etude based off of a one one six four two progression in the key of D. It's a picking etude, but it's not your ordinary picking etude. Picking etude? It's in nine. Nine, four, nine, eight. You decide how you want to count it, whether you treat the eighth note as the beat or the quarter note as the beat. It's not going to change anything. Um, well, yeah, I guess, yeah, no, no, no. I take that back. Nine, four. Because there's no triplet pulse in this. It's not like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, no. It's not like that at all, actually. Um, we have you know, basically an equal divide of nine beats with no particular accents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. So if you think about the chords in the key of D, um, the first, the one chord, D major. Any way you wanna do it. Are we in tune? All right, I think we're good, back in tune. All right, so. Um, the sixth chord, B minor, right? Four. Four chord G. Four. I mean, you guys have lots of your own versions of these chords, I'm sure. The two chord E minor, and then resolving back to D again as this progression turns back around on itself. Let's get to work. D's, right? D with the second finger on the 10th fret, fourth finger on the 12th fret of the D string. And we're just basically playing one and two, all right? Next part, third finger, uh, 12th fret of the E string. Same rhythm to an F sharp. To a G? That sounds like a question, but it's more declarative. Uh, from here, A, G, F sharp all with a duplet feel. Now be beats seven, eight, and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine. It's hard to count and play, right? Because we have that triplet figure. It's not really a triplet, but we have a three note figure against one and a half beats. One and two. The next part starts on the and of one, or and of two. And three and, right? Four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and. Lots to take in at once. Whew, lots and lots. Um, let's try that again. There we go to the sixth chord, B minor. In seventh position, we have this, this full bar chord available to us. It's a similar sort of pattern. First time through, we have two Bs. Oh, or not two Bs. Ho oh, ho! Don't get mad. Stop booing me. Stop. Stop it. I didn't mean it. All right. Um, B. C sharp. D. E. All right, now the duplets. F sharp. E, D. All right, so first time through. All right. Um, second pass. Okay, now we're going to use the blues scale and play the fifth scale degree, F sharp. Flat five, F natural. Ah, nice tritone there, huh? And then to the four, E. Ah, that's very nice. that, right? Woo! To the G chord. We have this Lydian thing going on here. Fourth scale degree in the key of G is, sorry, key of D is G. Fourth mode in the key of D is G Lydian. 
we're going to be um, outlining the G Lydian scale for this next arpeggio series. So this time through, guys, play G and B. Last one's gonna use the open strings, some open strings. We go to E for the second scale degree in the key of D. Two chord. Right. Let me explain it. E to G, back to the E. F sharp to G. A. And then B A G. Second pass through, we're going to climb back up into the D chord um, chromatically. Check this out. Ah so let me explain just quickly how we achieve that sort of chromatic ascent back into the one chord. So we have E and G, right? F sharp and G. Nice minor second harmonizing there. Unison's on G, fretted. All right, to an A. Shift positions, first finger at the seventh fret. All right, and then from here we're gonna walk chromatically from B, C, C sharp. So those two notes outline a seven chord. Kind of nice, you know, uh, C sharp is the third scale degree, G is the flat seven. Sorry, I like this, B, C, C sharp, and then the D that we play happens on the end of one. This one here, right? So you hear this chromatically ascending melody. But it's more like, right? Because the, the low D happens on beat one. people let's try um, doing a, a really slow at first um, sort of play along sort of uh, sort of segment so I'm gonna count us in I'm just gonna give you the last three beats I'm just gonna count seven eight nine and then we're in on beat one you ready dig down deep <sighs> deep breath here we go seven eight nine one comfortable at that tempo then by all means increase increase the speed I'm not exactly sure what what uh, how many beats per minute we were at just now but it wasn't it wasn't atrocious was it it wasn't crazy if it is crazy it might be because um, switching between arpeggios is a little bit rough <laughs> When you change between arpeggios um, or other single note sort of melodic devices in, in the context of a tune and you're trying to keep it in time, add the notes as you need them. It's not like switching chords where you have to be like... You know, we have to make your hands change in blocks, you know, it doesn't work like that. When you're playing an arpeggio series, Add the notes as you need them, like this. Imagine this is the second time through the through the D chord. Ready? B minor. Exactly. But the first two notes demonstrate what I was talking about, where you play the bass note. 
and then add in the third finger. You don't have to change to both of those notes right off the bat. That is the best way to practice arpeggios. And if you get into classical guitar playing in some of the series, uh, or some of the lessons here, rather, um, we talk about that a lot. You know, you might have your, your, your start chord um, in one position, like you'll put all your fingers down to get ready to begin the piece, but then if it's an arpeggio-based piece, you add the notes as you need them. You know, let things sustain in certain places and not perhaps in others. Um, but that's, that's the way to practice it. Oh, it's so killer. All right, so as far as how to practice this, uh, okay, when you're changing between positions, like I said, add the notes as you need them. Um, get some, some part of your, of your body, your mind engaged with counting. Uh, if you're not going to count numbers, which is difficult to do, like, you know, go one and two and three and, and then play against that, that's tough at first. But if you can get, like, your foot tapping, your head nodding, your shoulders into it, you're kind of, like, rocking into a groove, you know, you feel some sort of, like, pulsation going through you, that's awesome to keep you in time. You'll develop a really awesome, amazing internal clock that way. Um, and you play against you play against that. You play against how your body is moving, um, and that'll also be a really good coach, your own personal coach when you're when you're playing by yourself. Um, if you go to make a chord change and the chord change is late or early compared to where your body is, then uh, you know you, you'll know that you have to work on something. Um, yeah, playing in time it's absolutely crucial.